uh, that's how uh, future marriage works, I suppose. Um, I gave up Horde to be with the one I love, <laughs> essentially. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. It took a long time from the moment I first saw the game ever until I tried it because I didn't even have my own account at first and when I was like eight or nine during Christmas at my grandma's place my uncle always showed me a new game like every Christmas it was a new game in the beginning it was like Diablo and things like that and then eventually he had WoW open showing his uh, max levels at uh, in vanilla like I think I had like three or five level 60 characters and I used to play like Tibia and stuff just because like I enjoyed the whole MMO feeling. I've just wanted to play a good MMO always. I thought it was cool, so I just tried it out on his max level, running around in this very spot, killing level fives. <laughs> just uh, just for fun really. And then my brother started playing the game. At that time I could just be at home watching them play. And I was just uh, asking my mother to like, hey, I want WoW. And she was like, yeah, um, you're not 12 yet in my country. It's set to PG-12 or whatever. So I wasn't allowed because of violence or something. But uh, eventually my brother stopped playing. And at that time, the younger one of them allowed me to play on his account in exchange of me paying for game time because he didn't play anymore. I, I paid for a lot of time. Uh, I played on that account up until TBC. During TBC I got to like 28 on a shaman, on a, a character I wasn't even meant to play. I just made the name different from what I wanted to have as a main name. And then eventually that just became the character I played. And then uh, the next Christmas, uh, when TBC was out, I was given a new account, essentially. It was my other uncle. He stopped playing because he wanted to go to school and travel the world. And he was like, yeah, I'm not going to play this game anymore. I have a level 70 mage. Here you go. And I was like, are you sure? Am I just borrowing this? And he was like, nah, I mean, if I ever want to play again, I'll just buy a new game. And that's the very same account I have today. I mean, I've played this long just because I've already spent so much time on it already. It's not as much as like I feel forced to play, but it feels more like uh, the more I add to the accomplishments, the better it feels, I guess. Like the further I go in the adventure in a way, even though the adventure feeling kind of died out a little bit, it's still there somehow. I mean, it's, it's essentially the best MMO and the amount of people playing the game is also a big reason because I want to have the accessibility to actually be able to do content whenever I want instead of being on like a low game with 4k players and total and they're like yeah um, at 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. everything happens and everything outside of that is totally dead and that's like yeah, I'm, I'm going to focus on the best and top tier game, not just because it's a top tier game. I have to enjoy it as well. And wow, is is that? I really just want more classes and more content. We have just gotten a new class. I will main it. It's going to be great. But I want more things. Like, I, I don't just want raids, mythics, regular dungeons, PvP, battlegrounds. I want something more. I want essentially more casual stuff and I want more hardcore stuff. If they would just be like, yeah, hey, if you build a house here with your guild and that, that's just going to be a thing. Or even just player housing like, hey, if you buy this house, you can decorate inside and you can craft these things. Or you can find them as drops from rare mobs and like have trophies of some kind. If you killed a new boss, whatever, if... Uh, Deathwing comes back, you can get a th piece of Deathwing or something and put up on the wall. Something like that would just be cool. Like, it, it's not necessary, but it's just like a little touch of downtime. Like, you can do stuff like that in the downtime without having to be like, in the middle of a season, you're going to do season stuff. And then when the season's off, you just have other stuff to do. 
that's not just farming mounts or farming transmogs or just, well, some roleplay, but I mean, something just more that actually matters, that's actually progression somehow. And I never really got to experience the opening of AQ, so, or the Scarab Lord at all, because that, that just fascinates me, like the whole having a world event that includes so many things, like, hey, you can get this mount if you spend so much time trying to get it before this raid opens. And this raid opens when your faction has found enough materials. It fascinates me to the point where it's like, yeah, that, f that feels like it's actually community-driven. It feels like when you watch Sword Art Online, when people are trying to work together to something. Like, you don't have to actually be with someone there but you're working together with the same goal in mind. And I find that really cool, and I just wish they would add more things like that. Right, the thing is, <laughs> the tragic story of my faction identity overall is I'm literally the typical alliance player who wants to play Horde. Uh, <laughs> But every single person I have ever cared about, that I've played WoW with, have been Alliance. Ever since back in the day with my uncles. Still to this day, even different, like different people, I find faction pride to just be a bit basic overall though. Right now, it's because of my fiance. I would probably play Horde if it wasn't for her. <laughs> but uh, overall, like it's not like I'm a hardcore. Like, if I would be Horde, it wouldn't be like, oh, fuck the Alliance. I, I, I don't care if you're Alliance or if you're Horde. I just prefer the races, so I'm really glad that right now I can be a beast race that doesn't look awful. Because like I really, I really like the Tauren, I like the Undead, I like the Orcs. And it's like, I wish I could have played those as Alliance, but I can't. And that's just a bummer, but uh, the whole faction pride that I've seen at like BlizzCon streams and stuff, it's like rooted in sports teams, and I don't see the point in that, really. I think uh, everyone is just a person, so I don't think what you root for or what you like or what you love matter in the slightest, and I think it's kind of petty if someone would be like, yeah, you're a horde, I don't want to play with you because you're a horde, fuck you. Like, I, I don't see that, but I would like to play Horde, but I play Alliance, it doesn't matter. It's just how it is, it's always been like that. And uh, I'll stick to it for as, uh, well, now it's probably gonna be until I'm dead. Uh, that's how uh, future marriage works, I suppose. Um, I gave up Horde to be with the one I love, <laughs> essentially. This is the Cartel Monsters Gear Glider. This is a, uh, I think it's a, it's a dungeon drop from one of the uh, mythic only dungeons. And uh, the funny thing is, like, I didn't really know about this mount and I didn't really care about it. My fiance was like, hey, um, I want this mount. Do you want to run some dungeons with me so I can get the mount? So we run the dungeon. Uh, the first time I do it with her, the mount drops and she really wants it. And she gets pissed off because uh, it was my first time. But I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I don't really care about this mount. I, I don't care. So she could have it. But as you see, I, I have the mount. So what's funny is, one or two runs later, it drops again. So it's supposed to be rare, but I got it twice. Which I found kind of funny, in a way. If it's an achievement or just pure luck, I don't, I don't know. But it's, it's I find it kind of funny. I mean, the one I'm using right now is the Headless Horseman's mount, just because I've wanted this for so many years, and I finally got this when I had the time to spend on actually trying to get it on all of my characters. So yeah, I've spent so many years, like, wanting this, and then it's been like, yeah, I, I'm gonna try a few dungeons. Back then, I just had, like, one max level, so I can just do it once every day. Now I have, with this character, I think I have six level 60s, and they have a bunch of level 50s as well, which could also run the dungeon and be able to obtain this mount. So I had a really good chance this time around. The only thing though, that like this was the high point of Halloween for me. Like when it was Halloween, this was my job. This was what I needed. And now it's like, I've done everything Halloween has to offer now. 
I used to do like the whole mini games and stuff, kill the headless horseman in Goldshire and stuff like that. On Alliance and on Horde, uh, grabbing all these different candy boxes and whatever. This time around I did nothing of the sorts, I just farmed them out. So essentially I have no clue what to do on Halloween anymore, because like there's nothing for me to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of doing this like every um, event now, try and actually get achievements to obtain mounts, which I've like never done before. I mean, uh, essentially, I just love WoW, and what I mean is like, whatever WoW has to offer, I might like it. Except the overly obnoxious grinds, like, I really hated the AP grinds that you had to do, but raiding is something I've I've, I've done, I have raided, uh, and I really enjoy it, but uh, I just never had time, and when I had time, when I like went to school and stuff, I just focused on other games, making videos for other games, so right now, I'm working instead, so I don't have time for raiding, so then I've just focused my time on Mythic Plus and uh, PvP. Uh, PvP has always been in my heart, and Mythic Plus is something I started doing for real in Shadowlands. Like, try to do random dungeons, just be, being online, doing PvP, leveling new characters, doing dungeons, attempting to tank, heal, raid, like, learning as much as I can about the game and about all the classes, essentially. But yeah, like, uh, probably gonna enjoy crafting now when they revamp it. Um, I haven't really enjoyed crafting because it doesn't feel like it rewards you enough like it, it's it's just a means to an end in a way considering how like yeah you need to craft this or you can buy it for 30k and then that's it and then you can be like yeah okay am i gonna spend money or am i gonna spend money to buy gold to get it just so it's simple so you don't have to spend the time or are you gonna do the boring grind of crafting and crafting and crafting like millions of useless pieces, spending a bunch of like essentially you need to pay to get gold or farm gold to be able to craft the things that you will eventually earn a lot of gold from. That's difficult for me. I'd rather have crafting be like, yeah, hey, here's crafting. Uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna matter. It's like it's gonna be a thing to do that actually gives progress to you and others in a way other than, hey, buy gold, get this, or buy gold and spend some time, and or you spend a hell lot of time doing both. Like, I just want it to be fun. So I'm hoping I'm gonna add professions to the mix of content. Uh, the path battling, like, I love Pokemon. The path battling system is very basic and very, in my opinion, unfair. It doesn't feel like properly developed in a way. Like, if they would just make, I think if they would just make more abilities for them and maybe less different types and actually have a graph of what type works against what type and even adding more types to more things, I think it would be better. Because right now it feels like every pet people can buy with the real money is gonna just have a better chance at doing anything good. One thing I really love is the story of Illidan, that he used to sacrifices his own body and transforming himself into a monster for the greater good, but yet he gets mistaken for a bad guy, even though like, well, he looks like a demon now, so he's a bad guy, right? Because he just wants power. And he's too proud of himself to tell anyone that I'm doing this for you, and he's not like, he's, he's just saying that he wants power, Yet he does it to protect people. And I really like the whole yellow eyes, meaning that he was meant for greatness in the whole night of society. Yellow eyes meant you will do great things. Technically, he did great things. He accomplished a lot. I think, like, I like this story just because it's like, it's kind of sad that people are always so blind to see that maybe the sacrifice for power just to gain power but it's to save and then again the good guy gets treated like the villain but even then keeps on trying to help people and it's technically a statement like never let people hold you down like you do you no matter what people think because if you believe in yourself just like doing like Gilded and like he accepts 
his scars. They're trying to be like, yeah, you've done good now, so now you're going to change your scars and you're going to be holified or light forged, whatever. And it's like, nah, he, he, he wants to keep the power that he got himself because he's proud how he got them. Maybe he's not proud how he got them, but he what he sacrificed, he doesn't want that to be in vain by getting boosted by some magical being. And I think that's kind of cool. Because like I've, I've always followed Illidan since like there was this uh, machinima that well, someone tried to tell me was from Warcraft Three models, but I doubt that. But it was the uh, the defense of the ancients, like the War of the Ancients. It's like a huge machinima with the whole Warcraft Three lore, and it's just freaking amazing. Like it shows everything from the difficulty between Illidan and his brother. And that he can't go into the Emerald Dream and such like that. Uh, just, but his brother can. And it's just interesting how, how he's still, with all the things going wrong in his life, literally, he doesn't get the girl. He doesn't get to be the leader. He doesn't, he doesn't get anything, really. He still goes out and help people. Like, he wants to save the world. Because it's like he he cares more about the world than the people in it. Technically, he just wants to end the threat to the world. And it's in a way, it's like as I said before, this, it's a statement to never let let go of what you want to accomplish. Hmm. The journey matters more now, or uh, it mattered more then than it does now. And now it's more about accomplishing things rather than like the story of your character like it's not like you want to have a story but like everything that happens until you reach max level until you start raiding the leveling doesn't hit the same like it used to it doesn't feel like my own journey exists in a way uh, but i i still love how the game feels to play like how the gameplay is i freaking love it but again i would like more content to be able to do um so that i can play the game more because eventually gets stale doing the same thing over and over. Contrary to other common statements about the garrisons, it's like, I understand that the garrisons made the world less fun, but in my opinion, like, uh, when I think back to the garrisons, I feel calm. I feel like a sense of calmness, like, uh, I, it's hard to explain, but like, I used to feel calm, like, I could just sit there click on the table, do the missions, maybe talk to some friends, search for a dungeon, teleport to the main city, go buy some PvP gear, go look for some PvP stuff, go back to the garrison, just take a chill, go do world quests and do the boat stuff. And I still feel like, yeah, sure, like I hated how the story was, but in a way I don't I technically don't hate the garrisons because essentially like the game has been less social even though they've tried to make it more social and I don't think the garrisons is actually a big reason it became less social I think the whole idea of cross servers is actually the biggest thing that made it less social because if you would see like the classic servers it's in a way more social but I wouldn't say it's as social as the game used to be back in the day when I played. Like, back in the day, you could just go and be like, Hey, are you fishing? And they're like, yeah, sure, I'm fishing. Do you want to hang out? Yeah, I'm going to hang out. What's your, how's your day been? Today, it's like, oh, hey, that's a guy. Oh, hey, he, okay, he just came in here and helped me. That's nice of him. He invited me to do a quest. But again, didn't say a single word. In a way, I think it's more us as people. That have changed and we're just less social and we're less intrigued to try to find friends than back in the day like i know for sure when i was like 10 11 12 when i played wow well, way more than i do now like i played it freaking 15 hours every day i know for a fact that i attempted to actually befriend people like that was one of the goals of the game in my opinion finding someone to play with and now when i hop into classic that's not on my mind like i have my fiance we can play if we want i have uh, her friends some of her friends play uh, some of my friends play but it's like i still don't play with all of them because it's like different servers and whatnot because it's classic that's just harder to play with each other so in a way 
I kind of prefer retail, mainly because it's accessible. If I want to have a new person join me in this game, like if I have a friend or befriend someone new and it's like, hey, I, I thought about, wow. What, do you, what would you say if I join you in it? And even if I would be like, yeah, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna be playing uh, WoW for hours, but it's classic. I'll still just freaking put them in uh, retail because it's just way more accessible. Personally, sure, I think it's really fun to play a harder version of the game. I've not done like Iron Man and stuff like that. This is fun, but I, I wouldn't say that the changes are at all bad at all. Like, I don't think the bad things have been bad to the point where it ruins the game but it also feels like people just want to blame something because i can feel like in shadowlands it's like yeah the story sucks but i can have fun if i try to like the dungeons are great the the zones are great but i feel like splitting people apart is a bad idea in a way at, at the same time as it's a good idea because if this server would be not cross realm then it would be very difficult to play mythics and it would be difficult to do anything at all so i think i like i like it how it is right now i, I really i i just love the game i just uh, hope that they would do more with it than what they do i i love i'm loving what i'm getting but at the same time i don't think it's enough if you like a game play it if you don't like something tell them some people be like yeah if you don't like the game don't play it or well if you want to actually play the game and you want something to change let's hope for a change let's see if they listen at some point if that change comes then that's gonna be your number one game ever that's essentially what i feel like they can change whatever they want as long as they don't kill the game i think i'll still be able to play this game for a very very long time and it would be nice if they would add more content so that's you had more to do, but less forced content. Like, Shadowlands have had less forced content than BFA, in a way. But at the same time, it's still been a bunch of forced content. Because if you want to compete, or if you want to be like, Ah, I want to compete as far as I can go, then it's just, yeah, do everything. Because that's the best way for you to compete in your own personal league or whatever. Hmm. So if they would just make more stuff and uh, not make it forced make stuff for fun having races having social stuff like not necessarily social in like ah hey go here and talk but like the whole transmog contests that they have why not have that all the time why, and why have it just one week why have it just two days or just one day have it all the time have it possible like sure of course, I understand that people will be bored of it eventually, if it's there all the time. But in a way, won't that also build a community where like, yeah, Transmog Contest is a big thing. Make the rewards better. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I've done uh, YouTube and like streaming and such for a very long time. I started with uh, Minecraft stuff when I was like 15. It was a streaming... Uh, community let's say they had a minecraft server i streamed on there and then i made uh, some videos for them so it was like 15 when i started making videos and then uh, i made my own channel eventually uh, started out with a bit of minecraft a bit of like everything and when i started to take it seriously i was like 16 17 at the time i think at the time around when csgo became really huge with the skins again or something like that uh, i started playing counter-strike all the time 100% all the time, and I had Shadowplay running. Uh, if, for those who don't know what Shadowplay is, it's basically the NVIDIA broadcast, like, record five minutes into the past, so it's always on, and you just click a button and it saves the past five minutes. And uh, I played with uh, my um, childhood friend, which I'm still friends with today. We played all the time with different people. We tried to build a team and whatever, like, just for fun, not for actually competing, but just be like, yeah, we want to become better at the game, so we're going to play with the same people, so we learn together. For a few, like a year, two years, we just played Counter-Strike all the time. I saved the funny moments, like I didn't care about the game per se. It didn't have to be CS, it could have been whatever. If we played all WoW and we just chatted about and did funny stuff, 
then that would have been the content because my content has mainly been funny moments when it came to CS and then I've branched out to play a bunch more games just because uh, I'm a multi-gamer at heart. Um, not sure if that's an actual term, but I just play everything. Uh, maybe except like Barbie games and such, um, like kids games. But recently now at 27, so I've been doing it a while, uh, on and off, I have to say, because it hasn't gone well sometimes, it has gone well other times, it's gone up and down. I've had different times when I recorded all the time, and I have times where I just didn't record for years. Uh, but the content I do now is uh, mainly, I try to do funny moments and just stuff that happens when I'm playing games. Uh, it's been a lot of uh, World of Warcraft recently, and uh, I'm thinking of, in the future, doing more uh, videos about my Drakthir journey into Dragonflights. I'm even doing like uh, like RPG games, so the focus I'm trying to have right now is RPG games, the occasional VR game and shooters, but focus more on things that happens, and then occasionally if I get really good at Evoker, I might make guides for that. Uh, I don't want to really be a guide channel, and that's not what I'm aiming for, I'm aiming for funny or just stupid moments, if that is possible, or just me chilling out playing the games showing what happens really it's uh, it's kind of a hard niche to settle down to because it would probably be better if i could just do one game and keep doing that one game but uh, that not that's not really the kind of person i am i like to do different things i like to animate i like to draw i like to take photos i like to do everything really everything that's creative i can do to some extent i'm not very good at all of them of course uh, but uh, i like learning about them so i like to put out content in different ways uh, i even like when i've edited videos i've done like color grading and stuff like that in games which i don't really need to because they're technically already color graded to match whatever output they want but just for like fun and sometimes changing the mood a bit but uh, in the end, I end up scrapping it because it's usually in cutscenes and I don't really think that I need cutscenes. I don't, uh, I haven't really made videos for the story's purpose in a way. Uh, so if I would just, uh, let's say if I would play Bioshock, which I have made videos of in the past, I would just play the game and if there's an NPC that makes a funny noise, I'll just try to emphasize on that and make that moment more fun with subtitles and music or even memes it's, it's a really i'm really jumping around <laughs> with my answers and stuff but so the recent uh, wow videos i've done i've done more like um, i've been inspired by a few content creators that's uh, done classic wow stuff that uh, i've seen if you've seen them and look at my content you will see the similarities of what I've been inspired by. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit and try to make my own out of it. It's uh, kind of difficult because uh, I'm using uh, Adobe Premiere, which is um, a very difficult software to use, essentially because I've been using like Sony Vegas and Filmora and stuff like that before. And uh, Premiere is more difficult, so the whole animation process is very difficult because I don't really do much animating and keyframing which uh, subtitle keyframing I've done in the past that's kind of easy I can mm. I can look onto stuff and stuff like that but it's uh, quite difficult to make uh, new things for example I usually have model viewer and blender take a photo of my character and try to in a way animate the character so it's not too stale and uh, try to have more images of the same character so it looks like it's animated and changes positions but it's technically just another photo or another screenshot another image that I've edited or whatever and it's uh, difficult but uh, I'm enjoying the process and sometimes it's like I've done videos where I enjoy the process so much that I don't really see if the video is actually of quality or not but uh, usually then I just scrap it and uh, try to do something else. Uh, if you want to check these uh, shenanigans out, you can head out on uh, YouTube and search for Oxid the Gamer, and uh, you'll find me. My avatar is a uh, blue alien guy, kind of. Uh, or maybe at the time you're watching this, it might be this guy right here, this face. Check it out. 
and uh, thanks for the interview. It's been fun. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. 